Hey everybody, welcome to the Penske File. We're going to learn how to play For Sale, the game of property and prosperity. Stefan Dora. It's a great little filler game, auction based. Uh, it's good with three to six players, I believe, and it works well with higher numbers of players, as these auction games are usually want to do. So you open up the game box, you have two sets of cards. One of them is a property card, which uh, there are 30 of these with values from 1 to 30. Uh, the numbers are written right here. Higher value is obviously better. There are some money tokens, 1,000 and 2,000 uh, amounts. And there are check cards, a deck of check cards, which are these little money cards, which have values from 0 to 15, and there are two of each. So there's two zeros and two 15s. So to start the game, depending on the number of players, you give out a number of money tokens. Uh, the number of players impacts how much money each person gets. You also take your property cards and take out a number of cards that uh, are also dependent on players. If there's less players, you take out a few more cards. You can check the rule book for the numbers exactly. If there are five or six players, you leave all 30 of these property cards in there. And it's basically to make the total number of cards divisible by the number of players which leads to an equal number of cards being dealt out. So each player has their pile of money, and our, uh, we'll say this is a four-player game. So to start off, there would be four people with these little piles. We just have this one for now. And you deal the number of cards face down that are equal to the number of players. So we have these cards out here right now. And what happens is the person who deals is the starting bidder. So this person would bid $1,000, potentially. What you're doing is bidding on the high card, which in this case is a 30. The 6 is the low card. So you're trying to bid to get these high-value cards. But the high-value cards are used to get high-value checks in the second half of the game, which we'll check out in a second. So this person would bid 1000 We'll say this person to their left is then their turn. They would, also, they would bid 2000 it It'll go to the third player who decides, you know what, I don't want to pay $3,000 for this 30, I'm just going to pass. So when you pass, you take the lowest value card that's on the table, in this case is a 6, so that person would get a 6, and you lose half of your bid rounded down to the bank. So this person hadn't been uh, bid anything at this point, so he doesn't lose anything, and he gets the 6 card. Let's say it had gone around a couple rounds, and he has bid 3000 It comes around to him again, and all these cards are still out there. And he says, you know what, I'm going to pass at this point. I don't want to pay. So you take half of the bid that's out there already, which is, this is 3,000, so round, uh, half of that is 1,500, and you round down, which is 1,000. He keeps 1,000, and 2,000 go to the bank. So he gets his 1,000 back, and he gets this 6. He loses 2,000. So this goes around and around, people bidding or passing until all of these cards are gone. So if the next person... Took, uh, decided to pass, they would take 10, which is the next lowest value, they'd lose half their bid again. It goes like that until the high bid is the only person left, and everyone else has passed, and the high bid pays their entire bid amount for the high value card. They don't get half their money back, they lose the entire thing. So this goes like this for a while, everyone gets a card every single round, and then you lay out another four cards, or however many players there are and the bidding continues like that. And so this round continues until all the property cards are gone and everyone has an equal pile at the end. You might have money left over, you might not. All right, so in the second half of the game, after all the property cards have been uh, bought by players and they're keeping their amounts secret, face down in front of them, everyone has an equal pile. Some people might have money left over if they haven't spent anything. You take out the check cards which are the cards with 0 to 15, doubles of each, so two zeros, two fifteens, and then two of everything in between. Shuffle them up, and you do the same thing as the first round. You put down the number of cards equal to the number of players. So in our case, it's 4, like so. Now each player is going to take their hand, look at them, in this case this person has these two, and decide which card they want to buy which check with. So the higher the value, the higher the check you're going to get. So everyone chooses a card, puts them face down, and they all reveal at the same time. So in this case, we'll do this. And this last person reveals a six. So what happens is the high value bid gets the high value card. So in this case, the 30 gets the 12, which is the highest value here. The six is the lowest value, which gets the zero. 
and everything else in between is sorted out. So this nine would go to the 15 and the 11 would go to the 27. So everyone keeps their checks amounts and these property cards that they turned up are discarded essentially. And then they go into the next round. So again, another four cards would be laid down like so. And they'd put down their property cards, flip them over at the same time, and then disperse the checks according to the value of the cards. High value property gets the high value check. So there's a little strategy you can put into this uh, to quote SNL by determining when you want to play your low value cards or your high value, depending on what amounts have come out here. If everything's high, you might want to say, I'm going to waste my low value card and make out like a bandit with a fairly high value card. Like for this one, for example, there's a 14, 12, 15, 13. These are all pretty high value. You wouldn't be mistaken to get rid of a low value card in this situation. It's a good value. And so this continues until all the check cards are gone. Everyone will have an equal pile. And some people might have money left over. So to, to determine the final winner, you take your cards. In this case, this person has a 9 and a 12. That's a 21. And you'd add any remaining coins. If this person had one coin left, they'd add that. So it's 21 plus 1 is 22. This person has a final score of 22. And the winner of the game is the high score. So you want to get as much money as possible. And tiebreakers, if you have a tie at the end, is determined by whoever has the most coin money. That's the tiebreak. But it's a cool game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's great with a lot of people. It's very fast. It takes about 10 minutes. People can learn it instantly. It's very easy to teach, very easy to learn. And it's very, very simple and very addicting. And there's a the right level of strategy for these simple kind of games. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.